Liszt is fundamentally here to create social economic for Luxembourg. This is why Liszt exists. And we create social economic for Luxembourg by working with our partners. And our partners are in many cases industry partners, but also public sector partners. And we need to reach our partners. And in order to reach our partners, we need something to help us to reach a broader set of partners. And this is why the Digital Innovation Hub is essential for us. Because it's a mean to reach further and to more of our partners in this region. And we are delighted and pleasantly supporting this initiative, uh, which is not important, it's essential for us to do. So thank you for putting it together. It's a really, really a pleasure to be here and talk about LIST and our role in the Digital Innovation Hub. So what is LIST? LIST is a research institute. Uh, and as an institute, we try to make a difference for our partners indeed. We work in three different domains. We work on materials, we work on informatics, and we work on the environment. These are the three fields of expertise where we can support you. Uh, we are about 600 researchers, so we are quite a sizable organization who can support you with this. And we are here for you, and we need to reach you to discuss how we can contribute. But in order to tell you a bit about how we can contribute, I, maybe I thought I can share a bit on how do we see the vision for Industry 4.0, what is that? And secondly, what do we do in LIST in order to realize this? And lastly, I can talk a bit about how we can work together, because there are different ways to work with LIST. And then if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them. But maybe first a quick look at the industry landscape in Luxembourg. And I think this is a graph which is now one or two years old, so maybe we need to find a new, slightly revised, and I think it even comes from Lux Innovation, if I remember correctly. Thank you. But it tells you something about the importance of industry in Luxembourg. It's still one of the largest employers. We have a lot of people working in industry. It's decreasing a bit over time, but it's still large and it's comparable to ICT. And it also has a fairly large impact on the economy, around 6%. These numbers may have to be revised, but it's roughly right. So there's still a quite, or there is a sizable industry in Luxembourg, and that's something sometimes forgotten, not in Luxembourg, but for people looking from the outside of Luxembourg, they see us maybe as a financial hub, but there's also clearly a manufacturing hub here. This one I found quite interesting. This is from The Economist, and uh, this is quite recent, where they looked in who is under threat from China. And what you see here on the axis is, is how much is manufacturing compared to value added, and how much of the manufacturing is high-tech. And, of course, we have a fairly high GDP here. So if you look to those numbers, we come fairly low in comparison to some other countries. But it's another striking fact here is that the manufacturing here is not very high-tech. It's more of a low-tech, if you believe these numbers. And I, I want to have this as a food for thought. Is this correct? And how can we transform? Maybe it's difficult to increase the manufacturing as value-added of GDP a lot that we can have more advanced manufacturing here. And I think this is to some extent what this Industry 4.0 question is about. Now, I would like to talk about maybe three dimensions to Industry 4.0. And for those who are quick, you see there's a typo here, and this will propagate for the entire presentation. But I want to talk a bit about what is the connected factory, what is the optimized and predictable manufacturing, and what is sustainability for Industry 4.0. And these are three themes that is, we are currently working with on in list. And you see the Tesla fabric or manufacturing plant there, which somehow is supposed to live up to all these places. So let's talk about connectivity to begin with. So in the future, there will most likely be a chip in everything. <laughs> And this is a radical shift where we can produce chips with intelligence at a very, very low cost. And this creates a completely new way of looking at intelligence in chips. Because basically what we will see is that products will be linked to their information. Today, information and products don't follow each other strictly. You can make a product and the information is somewhere else and hopefully meet at some point in time. But if the information is intrinsically linked to the product, to the parts throughout the process, from the creation, to the manufacturing, to the logistics, to the end of life. And you can identify the product with all its parts and see where the information happens. You can do a lot of things. You can do predictive maintenance. And if something goes wrong, you can identify exactly which component was the origin of the problem. So this creates a paradigm shift in the way we look at materials information. And this is the fundamental 
change in manufacturing and the fundamental change that information and products will be intrinsically linked. And in order for this to happen, we need to build chips which are intelligent at a very, very low cost. So what are we doing within LIST? We work on, for example, something called energy harvesting. Because it's clear that these components cannot all have batteries. It's impossible. With so much intelligent chips, who are supposed to live for many, many years through the lifetime of the product, they cannot be battery powered. So they must somehow get the information, the energy from the environment. And this is what energy harvesting is about, just to give you an example. So we work on energy harvesting within this. How can we get the information, energy from the environment? This can be vibrations, it can be sound, it can be any source of energy that we can try to capture. And this is a rather technical graph, but just to show how we have developed such solutions going from the harvesting, the input signal, to the transformation of the input signal into energy, into something which is an antenna, for, so you can send it out again, and also some kind of minuscule battery that you may need in order to store it. And also the unit that controls all of this. We do all of this within LIST, and we work with these partners you see below here to create such solutions. And this is something we can do. As a research institute, we can deliver an end-to-end -end proof of concept of exactly this. And this is what we can offer to you. If you want something like this, we will deliver a proof of concept and that you can take and you can commercialize it and you can make it more robust and hopefully make it a product or service. So this is a nice example on how we work. Another thing I want to talk a bit about is about the optimization and the predictability. And this is one of our collaborations with Goodyear. I'm sure some of you know that we have a large strategic partnership with, with the Goodyear company where we try to work on the next generation of tires. Of course, there's a lot of material science in this, and four of these pillars is about, uh, about the materials, let's say. Uh, but we also work on the data science associated with it. So for the Goodyear, it's important to build a tire which is, has a high rolling resistance, uh, abbreviation resistance should be high, the wet grip should be really good, and the tire should be sustainable. And this, this is actually the new dimension for manufacturing of tires, that you also need a sustainable tire, which is somehow illustrated by this tire who has moss in the middle, which I'm not sure if that's the way to do a green tire, but it somehow illustrates the point. But just to show you a bit about what is the data science we are working on here. So this is a nice movie which illustrates the problem of wet grip. So basically in the Goodyear company they have this test track and they drive over this test track and there's water on the test track and then they film this tire from below. So there's a camera and there's somehow a window and they, they film it all the time and they drive like this all the time and they capture a lot, a lot of videos trying to understand is the wet grip of this tire good or bad. And this needs to be analyzed and it's in a massive amount of data that needs to be analyzed and understood in order to feed it back into the performance of, and the design of a new tire. So this is what we do to good, together with Goodyear. We analyze this type of data, this type of videos, in order to assess it from a number of point of views. A massive amount of data that needs to be analyzed on a very, very short notice in order to feed it back to the designers of the tires. Some of you have heard me talking about the digital twin. I think it's a term that somehow became associated with me and List. And the, the digital twin concept comes from manufacturing. Who has heard digital twin? I, I guess a number of people start to <laughs> over and over, again. over, and over <laughs> The idea is basically to have some kind of full-scale end-to-end replication in the digital world of something physical. And this, of course, came from the manufacturing industry. Uh, it started by companies like Siemens who said, when you design a new plant, of course you make some drawings, you make some simulations, and then you build a plant. But now that we have built a manufacturing plant, let's keep the digital version and let's keep it intact meaning that we synchronize it with the real uh, version of the manufacturing plant, and let's use it also to predict into the future. And this is what digital twin technology is about. It's about two things, to understand the current environment and being able to predict into the future. And for manufacturing, this is essential now, that more and more manufacturing plants have some kind of digital twin in order to work on the manufacturing. Uh, and this is also something we work on within LIST, as you know, digital twin and digital twin technologies is part of what we do also for, from the manufacturing industry. Here's just an example of the new visualization wall we have 
inaugurated in Liszt uh, end of last year, which is a, one of the few we have in Europe. It's a huge visualization wall, an interactive wall, where different designers can work together trying to optimize something. So typically in the good example you have those who work on the material science, but also those who design the wet grip, and they can together look at the performance of a tire and optimize it together. Different disciplines can see the result together and hence you can make it more efficient. So this is part of the design process in order to optimize the outcome. And the last point I wanted to mention is about sustainability. And these are numbers from Luxembourg. This is the greenhouse gas emissions we have in this country. And it's quite extreme. Uh, and this is not typical. 46% of the greenhouse gas emission in this country comes from transportation. And 15% comes from manufacturing. A lot of the transportation is logistics. So manufacturing and logistics contribute a lot to our global footprint. So a lot of our partners start to realize that we have to do something about it. It's of course for the sake of the environment, but also for the sake of business, because actually this is not very efficient. Uh, and you probably have seen that we have announced a strategic partnership with ArcelorMittal, where we do something which seems quite obvious. We take all the heat that comes out of the steel production process and we make that into electricity and power and we inject it in the grid again. And obviously this is something you should do, because there's so much heat generated in the steel production and this is a source of uh, energy that we need to get back into the grid. And this is something that we work with Arcelor now since some time, and we're doing more and more companies come to us, can we do something similar? And we will be delighted to do so, but this is a very, very proud of that partnership. All right, so how do we work with LIST? Yeah, we work on a number of recent research topics like connectivity, like optimization, like sustainability. And we can apply this using some of our technology infrastructures, the high performance computers, visualization walls or cognitive pillars for data analytics. It's all something we can offer to you. And then we have a number of business models. And this is basically how we can work together. We can work on short term service contracts. That's something we can do in a few weeks to test something out. We can set up a collaborative project where we go a bit deeper. We can set up a strategic partnership. That's what we have a good year. We can even set up a program where we work with many companies on a solution where we think that it's a joint interest to work on something. And that's another way of working with LIST. And sometimes we only give away. Sometimes we work on shared know-how for, for the society. Uh, that's something we mainly do with our ministries, but it's also part of a public research institute's mission to do so. What we deliver is a prototype. You'll get something functional. Uh, and by that, you can take a business decision if you want to commercialize it, if you want to productize it, we leave that up to you. But you get a functional prototype from us, uh, and with that, you are hopefully ready to take a business decision whether this should become a product or service. We also do industry training. So if you want us to train, if your staff or someone needs to get further knowledge about this, it's also something we can offer. And we do a lot of events and outreach like this one, for example. So that's it. Uh, 600 people, we are here to help out, reach out through the Digital Innovation Hub. We are pleased to support you. Thank you so much.